everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio. Today I'm sharing with you a whimsical witch illustration that I did. And basically I was experimenting with some pastel paper from a pastel paper pad. I'm going to be using the pen pastels again and I wanted to try out this paper which was designed to use with pen pastels or with other, you know, stick pastels or whatever. Um, supposedly it has a lot of tooth so there's a lot of crevices and cracks and places for the pestle to sink into and adhere to. So it's, it's designed to use the pestle. So I thought, okay, I'll try it out. Um, the piece that I picked is kind of an off-white color. The pad that I have is, uh, it's got everything from like tan to kind of a yellowy cream color and some white. It's got several different colors of pastel paper in it. And so this is the first time I've used it. I've been um, making my few little pan pastel things that I've worked on have all been on 140 pound cold press watercolor paper because that's generally what I use for mixed media. It's a nice heavy paper. It doesn't, you know, it takes a lot of abuse because I, I abuse things. <laughs> I abuse paper. <laughs> I'm a paper abuser. There needs to be a 12 step program. That and the brushes I abuse as well. I, I do terrible things to brushes. But anyway, so I got on my piece of paper and I cut it in half basically because it was twice as big as this and I just I was just wanting to mess around. Didn't want to, you know, commit to a huge piece. Not that it's that big, but you know what I'm saying. It was like 15 by uh, 10 or something. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm drawing my illustration of this little whimsical witch for All Hallows Eve with my soft graphite drafting pencil. And it has 2B graphite in it, which is a soft blendable graphite. And then it's in a mechanical pencil, so I can't break it. As soon as I need more lead, I just click click on the end and more lead comes out. It's my favorite thing to draw illustrations with. And then I'm also using a blending stump because I know that I'm going to be going over this with other, um, with like the soft tool knife things from the pen pastels. And so I want to make sure that it, the graphite's already blended so that when I go over it, it doesn't blend into the pastel and change the color of the pastel because it is very soft graphite. So um, that also starts in making shadows and things when you blend out with a blending stump or a paper stump or a tortillion or a tortilla. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those days again, people. It's one of those days. So the next thing that I'm doing is I've got out my pan pastels and my knife tool soft, soft S-O-F-F-T tools. They have a compressed sponge tip type thing and the tips are, you know, you can take them off and put clean ones on. Uh, you, when you want to change colors, you can just clean off the color that you have onto a paper napkin. Just like rub it, you know, rub it off and it's it comes pretty clean enough for you to change colors. These pastels are very soft and very highly pigmented. So it just takes a teeny tiny bit to um, have any sort of a color. Now the two pen pastel sets that I have, which I got as a gift from my friend and my mom, are the portrait set and the painting set. And I have yet to actually do a portrait. I'm not sure which colors I'm supposed to use. So um, I'm trying out different colors. The, some of these are tints, which are the pure pigment with white. Some of them are the pure pigment and then some of them are the shades. And the shades have the pure pigment with black. So I, I can't see which colors they are. I just am, you know, they have the color on the bottom like, oh, it's it's ochre or it's whatever, you know, it's cobalt teal or it's ultramarine blue or whatever um, on the bottom. But I can't see them. So um, I'm not going by that. I'm just going by, well, the pan looks like this color. So I'm trying it out, trying to figure out what colors to use for the shadows, what colors to use for the highlights, um, what color is the, is the mid-tone. Um, I thought this one down in the bottom left was going to be skin tone, but it's really too orange. And I figured out that the actual skin tone is the one up at the upper left. 
um, for, you know, like a pale Caucasian type person, which is mostly what I do because I'm a pale Caucasian person. Not that I'm object, I object to making any other skin tones. It's just what I'm used to. It's what I see. So, you know, that's kind of how we are when we, when we make pictures of people, we tend to make them look like us and not necessarily intentionally. It's just what happens. So that's why my girls are usually white, white, pale, pinkish people, pale, pinkish people. <laughs> so I decided to make her have blue hair because regular hair is boring. I hardly ever make regular hair. It's always a different color. My own hair has a big purple streak through the middle of it, although some of it is normal color, but I don't know. I might change the whole thing to purple some point. It's just that I have to bleach it in order to do that and uh, my hair's already fine and and I just I don't want to do all that damage so that's the reason that I just have a streak and not like an entire change of color to something more interesting than yellowish brown which is boring. So I'm just taking the different colors and I'm, I pretty much for the entire time used only one soft tool. It's kind of the one that has the rounded tip. Um, it's pretty accurate as far as where I can put the pastel. And for the hat, I'm using a couple different grays and the black and um, adding shadows and highlights using the pastel. So in theory, this white pastel should be able to go over the top of everything and lighten it up. It doesn't work as well as I wish it did. Maybe I don't get enough of it on there, but a couple times I try to do some highlights with that white pastel and they just don't pop as much as I want them to. Uh, here's where I changed because that other one was so dirty I couldn't get it clean and then I got black in the orange and yeah. So I picked up a different stick. Um, when you buy these sets that have the 20 pastel colors in them, they do come with a couple of those knives and uh, um, some changeable tips and a couple of those other like wedgy things, different tools for you to try out. So you probably don't really need to buy extras. I didn't know that um, when I asked for these for Christmas and so I also included a, a big set of the soft tools that had all kinds of different stuff in it. Um, like a $20 set of all different types of tools. So I have extras. That's why I have so many of those knives. <laughs> I don't really need that many because each set came with a couple of them. And then um, I have more from that other set. So that's what happened. That's why I have so many. It's a little bit overkill. So I'm trying out one of these big spongy ones for the first time to do the background. And man, does it fill that up fast. <laughs> I'm using that kind of pale yellow and then the darker ochre color um, to kind of give a mottled background effect by blending the two right on the paper using that ginormous sponge. And then I end up using another one later, that other one that looks kind of like a rectangle later, which hasn't been used yet. Then I'm squirting it with some Spectrafix, which is a workable fixative that is non-toxic and doesn't smell bad and you can use it it's not an aerosol you can use it in your studio so um, the materials I'm using I will link them below and you guys can find them through my links so I decided that I wanted her to have a flower on her hat because it looked kind of plain so I went ahead and drew that in with my um, pencil and then I'm just going and adding color to it. Um, it's kind of a rose type of a situation or maybe a peony or something. I don't know. And as you can see, it did go over even the blackest black. You can still see a little bit of the shadow though because I'm putting it over black, but it is kind of, the pastels are kind of opaque. They can go over other stuff. So that's kind of nice and it ends up working out fine. Um, so then I decide I need more of that red because if it's going to be in the rows, it's got to be somewhere else. Um, I did put makeup on this witch, um, Dia de los Muertos or Sugar Skull makeup. 
So, just to make her more whimsical. Because the two holidays, All Hallows Eve and, or Halloween and uh, Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead kind of overlap. So, I gave her some Sugar Skull makeup. Because I thought she would think that was fun. Because she's whimsical. She might like to wear bright colors on her face. So I put away the pen pastels and I'm switching to the ink tense pencils. This is when we go mixed media because now I'm mixing up the media. And I did discover that this is not mixed media paper. <laughs> it's pastel, pastel paper intended for pastels. It's too thin for the abuse that I give it. Uh, it curls, it buckles, um, it comes out very wrinkled and, and and that annoys me. So I guess this isn't the right application for this paper. I should just stick completely with the pastels um, if I ever want to use this paper. But I didn't want to stick to the, all to the pastels. I wanted to add in other colors with ink tints because that's what I like to do. So I'm just going to go through and pump up some of the colors, add more definition with the pencils, and then I'm blending the pencils. The, the ink tense pencils are ink pencils that are water soluble when you first put them on and then once they once you've blended them and they're with the water and then they're dry, they're permanent. So it becomes an ink on there. So they're kind of cool. I like them. And so I'm putting them in places and then blending with a water barrel brush which is it's a synthetic brush that has water inside of the handle that just keeps it moist all the time so I like those too I use those quite a bit with Neocolor 2's and uh, these type of things and then I'm also using my white and my black Posca pens these are the fine tip Posca pens and I, uh, you know, I'm an illustrator. <laughs> I put black lines around everything. That's just how I roll. So I'm doing that um, as I go as well. I'm adding black lines to define things. I wonder if I'll ever outgrow that. I don't know if I will. I like it. I like it. black lines around things. So I'm kind of doing things in sections rather than like normally with an illustration I would draw in pencil and then I would I would ink everything like I would ink all the lines and I usually use uh, India ink the um, Patrick Castell pit pens artist pen thingies to do that but I this this I'm like kind of going backwards I'm uh, I'd colored it first with pastel then I'm intensifying some areas and adding definition with the ink tints. And then I'm doing the inking over the top. <laughs> so a little bit different than what I normally do, but it works perfectly fine for this application. It worked great, in fact. So I can add in shading as well when I'm using the ink tense pencils. Um, you know, darker areas of color to add some more shading even though I already started doing that with the pastel to begin with, I'm intensifying it with the ink tense because it's intense ink tense. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> when I've completed this project, I'll probably post it in a Facebook group that I belong to called the Gypsy and the Witch, which is the YouTube creators, Rita Marie and Callie Black. Um, they run that group and they have theme monthly themes and this month the theme is All Hallows Eve so uh, probably post it in there as well as just on my regular um, Facebook feed I haven't ever posted anything for their themes yet because I haven't been in that group very long there's so many groups on Facebook I mean I belong to like so many groups and there's so many you know collaborations and hops and crawls and challenges and you know, it just goes on and on and I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed so I need to maybe back off on some of those <laughs> although it's fun to have challenges to make videos of it gives me something to make a video of for you guys 
So, of course, if you like this video, please like it, comment so I know you were here, uh, share it, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Those things help out my channel a lot. And I did kind of set, well, my friends set a goal for me to reach uh, 4,000 by the end of the year. So, um, you know, if you subscribe, that helps my goal or their goal, or somebody's goal. Of course, if I reach 4,000, I'll have another giveaway. Personalized um, art giveaway again, and it'll be four times. This, you know, four people will win this time since it's 4,000. So, you know, tell your friends. Tell them to come subscribe. <laughs> and they'll be like, what? Why should I subscribe to that crazy girl? She's nuts. <laughs> So again, I'm just, I'm using the Inktense pencils to add shading and highlights, and it really is obvious on the lips because I deepened up the crease between the lips and then around the edges, I defined it a little bit with the darker color, and then I added that white, and it really, that white pencil made a huge difference on uh, defining her lips more. And on the vines on her cheeks, I never even colored them with pastels, so I've got to color them with the pencils, which is easy. The one thing about the pastels is that the smallest tool, the most, um, you know, the one that has the most definition is that little pointy one, and even it doesn't have a whole lot of, <laughs> you know, you can't precisely apply color in a very small space, so. That's the reason that I tend to want to then put something else over the top. And of course, it's mixed media, which is what I do. <laughs> so I, I really, I am not shy about mixing up everything and throwing, you know, this in with that. It doesn't bother me at all. I like it that way. So she has a marigold on her chin. In case you were wondering that what that is, it's a marigold. I promise it is. <laughs> Not sure I know how to draw a marigold. That's what I'm saying. So I think pretty much the rest of the video is exactly the same as this. Um, adding highlights, adding shadows, adding definition with the ink tints, blending it. Then adding the black fine tip Posca pen, and then at the very end the white fine tip Posca pen. And so on and so forth. I think I'll play some music, because I don't really have anything to say. Amazingly, Miss Taki doesn't have anything to say. <laughs>
Okay, so that was a couple nice pieces of uh, music from the YouTube audio library, which is really great because then we don't have to worry about any uh, conflicts with copyright. And this is where I'm finishing up with some stenciling and pan pastels. And that worked out really great. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.